Hello, 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 hello. I uh, forgot to press the button. If I press the button, yay, how's it going? I am super tired, I forgot to put the vignettes on as well. There we go. I am hopefully nominally more well rested than the other day, um, but um, I am hopefully going to do a little bit of drum practice today because I am playing a gig with Great Manta on Friday. Hey, there's two of me. There's another one up here. Um, <laughs> uh, we're not doing the clone question today. We're definitely not doing the clone question today. Let's get rid of that. Cool. Um, how are you all doing? I strongly suspect that my signal absolutely, absolutely sucks right now. Um, and that's fine. That is what it is. Um, hopefully it will improve shortly, but I'm convinced that the reason is that it is really, 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 really rainy and miserable today. Um, which is something I wouldn't know about because I am inside in a windowless cave. Um, so, um, yeah, so what I wanted to try and do is to do some Great Manta prep. Um, and that means that I am um, going to kind of be winging it because um, I've still not managed to get, uh, I've got everything set up in my project that, so I can uh, play to music that uh, shouldn't be too much of a pain. But it still feels kind of awkward trying to get it, ah, uh, I can kind of do it off my phone, it should be fine. I'll be able to, uh, I'll be able to try and get something, something working so that I can uh, play some music. Everything would be, you should be seeing me a little bit, there would be at least one, there should be at least one me going on. Um, Maybe not more than one me, but uh, yeah, everything will be better if everyone had. I like clones would just make everything easier. Um, there was some young adult novel. I bet I bet someone someone in chat has read, but I cannot think of what it is. Where some where the, where the protagonist is spirited off to a magical fantasy world, and they start going on these wonderful adventures, but because they still have to go to school. They, um, um, they, they have like a clone, like a magical clone, that can just like coast through schoolwork for them. Uh, I don't know if any of you remember which one that is. I'm convinced, I'm convinced that Hooting will have, um, will have read this. What is the thing with the, uh, magical adventures and they all go off and, but they've got a clone. Um, I want to say Darren Shan, but I know it's not Darren Shan. Uh, or maybe, or not even like the uh, the other Darren Shan series, not the self-insert one, which was, by the way, based on the Phantasm films. I cannot be unconvinced that Darren Shan, the vampire stuff, stole it all from um, uh, the the people in at least like. Skaldarchy. Yes, that's the one. Uh, <laughs> whenever I see the uh, the cover of um, Adrenaline Mob, whenever I see the cover of Adrenaline Mob, for some reason I think of Skaldarchy Pleasant. I can get this up now. Uh, this is the uh, uh, the project that that Mike Portnoy from Dream Theater had uh, after he left Dream Theater, but before he did anything else. Uh, Every single time I see their album covers, I can get this. Oh, come on. Let's get fire. I can, I can do this. Here we go. That should be showing. It's not. There we go. So, like, these are the covers for uh, uh, Adrenaline Mob. And they all look like this. Uh, let me just make that, I can make that bigger. Uh, there we go. Adrenaline Mob. Adrenaline Mob. Uh, I think there's another one, but I can't find it. But it's all it's all spooky, scary skeletons. And uh, every single time I see this cover, I think of Skull Dudgery Pleasant instead of what I think they wanted me to think about, which was them being really, really, really cool. Um, which I'm I'm sure they are, but maybe they got the wrong vibe with that. Let's get that back to there. Cool. Yeah, um, that that was. I don't know. I other people, other people. There, there, there exist adrenaline mob fans. 
Uh, but I'm, I was never that convinced by it as a project. Um, I'm they have two albums out. I didn't even realize that. The, I know there was the other one, Winery Dogs, which was much better, I thought. Miss Chief Taylor, how did you not read Skullduggery? Yeah, no, it's exactly the same. Just spooky, scary skeletons. I don't know, spooking up the night. Um, so, uh, what am I actually doing with drums in a minute? Um, I should probably be doing something more sensible than just noodling, so I'm just going to try and stick to the um, quadruple bounce. Because they always do uh, double bounce. Oh, or triple bounce. So, quadruple bounce is probably pretty good. That is not a good number for my uh, signal. So I'm assuming that I look like absolute hell. More th than usual, uh, before we make the jokes. Goosebumps. I read a lot of the Goosebumps. I was, I was absolutely terrified of uh, Slappy the Dummy when I was little. Did you ever see the, um, what was the, they had like one of the, 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 the video, the video, I, I remember what, borrowing a, a, a Goosebumps video cassette from the library where they'd film some of the uh, uh, stories. And I know that they filled the dummy one, that's probably why I was so frightened, although I, I distinctly remember the book, uh, which I cannot remember... I cannot remember what the name of the book was, although I'm sure I'd recognise if I saw it. But anyway, there was one where there was people at a camp, and I think there was a werewolf at the camp. Slappy the dummy. Um, there was one where there, there were all these kind of people at a uh, summer camp and uh, there was a werewolf at the camp and eventually they killed the werewolf with, I don't know, the power of friendship or something like that. And then uh, at the end, they're like, oh, actually it was a robot because it was training for us to go to a very dangerous place, <laughs> a planet called Earth. And I feel like it's so good as a, as a really weird, <laughs> out of nowhere twist. I'm, I'm convinced I dreamed it, or I dreamt it. No, actually we're going to a planet called Earth. It wasn't Earth a lot all along, it was a totally different thing. So who knows what was going on with that. Um, I do remember the uh, uh, Slappy the Dummy episode where they had the... Um, um, he breathes the green gas that turns you into a puppet. Or a dummy, not a puppet, a dummy. Oh yeah, spoilers for an ep a TV episode that came out about 35 years ago, I suppose. So, uh... Breathing green gas, to tell me, that sounds like, I don't know. Just breathing green gas, I don't know, it sounds like the kind of thing a Digimon would do. You know, I've just realized my mistake now. I had a massive lunch. And uh, all of my lunches were worn off, and now I think I'm gonna die of starvation live on stream. I didn't prep any coffee. I was gonna prep coffee and I thought, no, I didn't sleep well last night and therefore I should make sure I do sleep well. And that was a mistake. Because uh, coffee makes the world go round. Um, but, uh, no, I've got, I've got some... Oh, no. I've got, like, that much water to get me through the entire street. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. Or I could just use make use of my BRB thing. I think it's too late to BRB to Greg's. Um, I don't... I'm not currently breathing green gas. But, uh, Mischief Teller will probably confirm that I have in the past breathed green gas. Oh yeah, that's a neat thing. I, I've been mucking around with uh, advanced scene switcher, uh, so I've got this little this little thing over here, um, which I should have changed the text on. Uh, oh no, hold on, I can change the text right now. But I've got some real clever, clever noodly nonsense going on. So it shouldn't mean I've got to awkwardly fix anything. There we go. Cool. How tiny is that text? Is that too tiny? The little tickery thing at the bottom? Or is it like, okay for a teeny tiny pop-up that just appears and disappears at will? 
kind of on its own schedule, like, uh, like a magpie. Are any of you breathing green gas? That's a good question. How are you all, and what colour is the gas that you are breathing? Not to say the, uh... Oh, okay, that's all good then. Um, not to say that you're all breathing in these gases, I mean to say the gases that you're breathing, but, well, both in and out. Because, like, if you're breathing out green gas... No, hold on, if you're... If you're breathing out yellow, but then there is blue gas that you would be breathing in, would that mean, like, everything would be green? How do you mix colours? And is the mixing of gaseous colours additive or subtractive? Mischief teller, that's a question. In fact, no, both of you should know, but mischief teller, that's a question for you. You both seem like clever design people. I am... I am... You, you turn green. Yeah, yeah but are we turning green because of the gas or because the gas is poison? Is it like Indiana Jones where, like, there are three, like, there are three different things and you press the wrong one, poison gas comes out. I don't know what episode of Indiana Jones that is. <laughs> episode! Ep Indiana Jones does not have episodes, I don't know why I said that. Because of the colours. You know what? I actually have... I actually have a smoke asset. Can we get... I bet I can get some, uh... I bet I can get some, uh, smoke in here. Let's, uh... Let's do this thing. Uh, hold on. Uh, I bet I absolutely can do this. Here we go. That's gonna loop. Uh, there we go. I think I should be fine. There we go. Now let's do this. Uh, blending mode. Additive. Let's do the opacity. Oh, hold on. Uh, filters. We're gonna make it, we're gonna have some green gas up in here. Here we go. Opacity is gonna be way down there. So now it looks like there's a fire going on, which is not that great. We've gotta get the saturation ultra high. Hue shift green. There we go. That's what we're talking about. That's what we're talking about. Hold on. Oh no, I lost it. Uh, there we go. There we go. Well, that should be behind chat. Why is that? Oh, actually, I know why. Oh, hold on, there we go. There we go. How was that? We got green gas. Uh, that's, I'm going to knock the opacity down just because that's a bit overbearing. There we go. Cool, green gas, green gas. Now, it looks, now it looks, it looks. Uh, is there a way to mask with this? Uh, I think there is. I don't know if I can do that. Uh, oh, I can't do it. I'll get rid of that. Anyway, that's a whole thing. Uh, let's knock it down even more, just so it doesn't become too annoying. There we go, it's just a sneaky hint of so it's like in um it's like in The Sims where um after after someone hasn't showered for a couple of days, they just start walking around emitting green gas. Although the green gas in the Sims, as I understand it, does not turn you into a, a dummy. Uh, I think it just means that your sim has low hygiene. I have well actually I can't really talk. I was gonna say I have good hygiene, but I did play drums this morning, so maybe not. But we've got that good old green gas, so that's a, that's a thing. And actually, it's pretty, uh, I don't know, I, I had uh, a, a brief scare this morning because I had a, Oh no, I don't want to die of that. I've always, I've never wanted to die of that. We went for a picnic the other day and we nearly died of that. Then we moved and the, the flies followed us because uh, we had food. It was very nice, it was very nice, it was very sunny. But the flies weren't nice, but everything else was nice. There was no green gas at the picnic, as I recall. Or if there was, uh, it was, it was colourless green gas. It was invisible green gas, if there were, ever was such a thing. But the, um, uh, no, no, I was gonna, yeah, so, um, I was in a horrible mood this morning. Um, and so I had to buy an emergency Greggs, as you do. Uh, and I also got a muffin, and I was eating my muffin 
while sitting directly over. I've got an electric radiator that I sit. I just sit above, like with my legs over the top, while I'm on my PC. And um, one singular crumb of chocolate muffin, uh, of triple chocolate muffin, fell into the radiator. And um, suddenly, I just and I didn't notice it until I could smell like toast or burning. And then I looked down, there's smoke coming out of this radiator. And I suddenly, for a moment, thought I was convinced that I was about to die. I was convinced that this, this radiator had caught fire. And, um... It was only a crumb, it was only a teeny crumb of muffin, it was fine. I got most of the muffin. Um... But yeah, so suddenly I was just like, it's like, hold on a minute, why is there smoke coming out of this? And it was, uh... I don't know what colour it was now, I, I feel like it was grey, but... I'm not sure. Maybe it's one of those, like, uh, if you, like, burn different chemicals, it has a different smoke. Like, like if you burn barium, it goes green, and if you burn copper, it goes red. Is that the colours? I can't remember. I failed chemistry. Um, but I, I know that if you burn different things in a Bunsen burner, it goes different colours. And if you expose the flame to oxygen, it burns a different colour as well. But either way, so it was, uh, it was, uh, you know, it was a real, real frightening experience. Barrels of fun. It reminds me, um, I used to, uh, when I used to be a smoker, I once, um, I used to, because I thought it was cool. Uh, it wasn't cool, but uh, I thought it was cool. But in order to be even cooler, I got a, a, a Zippo lighter instead of a, um... Well, yeah, but the burning material turns into the smoke. Uh... Oh, is it? Oh, no, you're right. You're absolutely right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, no, I used to have those Zippo lights, and I remember, um, refueling it while I was preparing for a band practice while my drum gear was at my parents' house, and I wanted to do it sneakily so that no, they wouldn't know, and of course they knew, but I wanted to do it sneakily. I refueled it, and I very, very quickly tested it to make sure that it worked, and obviously I just poured a load of fuel everywhere, it was on everything, on my hands, on my lighter, on my legs, and every everywhere, uh, because I was a mucky pup, I suppose. And, um, yeah, yeah, and so I check this, I flick it, and the lighter goes up, and then the entire lighter becomes engulfed in flame. And then my hand is on fire, and my sleeve is on fire, and my leg is all on fire, and then my, uh, <laughs> and my, my legs are on fire, and the carpet is on fire, I think my snare drum was briefly on fire as well. And in that moment, I knew, damn it, first of all, Everyone is going to know that I, I, I failed in this in, in, in this instance, and I, and I you know, kind of, um, you know, I, I've kind of been caught out smoking. Second of all, I'm going to burn the parents' house down, which isn't so great. Third of all, I'm going to die. I'm going to burn. This is going to this is going to hurt. So I psychologically prepared for a whole lot of really bad stuff to happen. And uh, and as you know, if you've ever burnt fuel off of yourself. Um, you know, as soon as it started, it had stopped again, it was over, and it was all gone. And I'm just sitting there thinking, ah, ah. Exactly, exactly. I might be very disappointed if I burn the house down. But, um, yeah, so that was, uh, that was an exciting thing. But, um, yeah, so, there was some toxic fumes going on there, I suppose, as well. Once again, it's going to be very strange if anyone else joins us later, because, um... Last time when anyone joined the stream, I was in, uh, actually, I was in smell -o vision when we were in the, 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 the kind of TikTok vertical kind of uh, aspect ratio thing. Now we've got weird gases, and I can just change the color of the gas as well. I think, what if you go blue instead of green? I think let's get some blue gas. Uh, let's get that back to zero. Uh, here we go. Is that blue now? Actually, I quite like I quite like how that looks. There we go. Blue gas. Cool. Now we've got blue gas. Yeah, exactly, exactly. I can I still can't do the thing where um, you pinch a, a candle to put it out. Um, I feel like there's someone else in the, someone else in, in in this chat has done that, but I can't do the thing where you uh, where you like lick your fingers and you pinch the thing and it, and, the, and the candle goes out because that's so scary to me. Why am I dropping these sticks? 
That's so scary to me, um, trying to do that with just a, um, reusable matches. What is going on? Um, are they the thing like, like, uh, like joke birthday candles where you kind of blow it out and then it just reignites just endlessly? I'm really glad that my lighter wasn't a joke birthday candle. Or my snare drum where it just, after I was engulfed with flame and then it went out, I'm glad it didn't keep uh, kind of coming back on or anything like that. That'd be horrifying. You probably could, as in, like, you could probably reignite after being set on fire as, like, a joke birthday candle. Did... Really? Did you really? Ah, oh. That's so mean. I, w I wish I could put candles out, like, it just feels like such a flex, such, like, such overt bravery to be able to just touch the fire. I can't do that. Gareth from Thief can do that. I can't do that. At least I know we can do it in Thief 3. I don't think you can do it- I don't remember if you can do it in the first Thief Thieves. You can put out paper- I can put out the bins. That's the thing I can put out. Actually, it, Oh, it's Monday, I don't put out bins today. I can't even put out the bins, I forget. So, uh... You can do it! You can actually do it! How? What's your secret, Brave Master? How do you put out fire with your fingers? It's like a super pad. It, it's indistinguishable. It's indistinct. Oh my goodness. It is indistinguishable from magic to me. It, it might as well be magic for what, for what it is. That's just so cool. If you had to put out fire using nothing but your hand. Like, if you, if you, if you did like, uh, if you were kind of, uh, you know, you had a candle in front of you and you were just going to put it out. If you did this kind of thing, and you say the magic words, which I think in this case would be Ziggy Boogie Duke. Uh, you say, uh, Ziggy Boogie Duke. And the candle goes out. Like, I would be amazed. I would genuinely be in, like, I would have the awe of a, a, of a child struck by bewilderment. Um, uh, stricken by bewilderment uh, at that. Because it might as well be a magic trick to me. That is absolute, like, genius. How do you do it? You, you, you disappear from chat, probably because you're lighting candles just to remind yourself of the technique. Uh, by the way, don't burn the house down. That would be a bad thing to do. For anyone in chat, don't burn your house down. Um, if you set yourself on fire while refueling as a co lighter, bad, but, you know, that's acceptable. Uh, burning the actual house down is unacceptable. There's kind of like a, a sliding scale from okay to not okay. And burning the house down is not okay. Uh, <laughs> like a stage cigarette. I, uh, I remember smoking a stage cigarette once. It's, it's so funny because there's no, uh, there's nothing in it. It's just very restrained. That, see, that might as well be the same skill to me. Like, there is fire, and then you make them be no fire. Like, how does that happen? How do you, how does that happen? The fire isn't actually that hot. Uh, don't with the candle. I'm just flailing on this practice pad. I don't know what I'm doing. Um, you know, I've been playing a, a flammer cues recently. This seems like a fun one to um, develop. You got to do it fast. So you can't do it slow, okay, but like, you can burn you, yourself with, with, with that stuff. So it's not like, super, super good. Because that's the problem, like, I feel like I would hesitate, then I would burn myself, and the problem is, I'm like, um, like, I am absolute, I have the, the, the learning condition of an animal, like, I would burn myself with one time, and then I would be frightened of fire for like, the next five years. You blow, you blow the can out and you don't get a finger in water to stop the smoke. You, that makes sense, but why not just dump, dunk the candle in water? That would stop the smoke better. Yeah, but like, that tolerance implies that you burn yourself a little bit. And I don't even want to burn myself a little bit. Like... I am... I am Courage the Cowardly Dog. I am terrified of this stuff. 
I kind of thought that was just like, uh, I thought that was a mum thing. I thought all mums were just like able to do that because I know, I know our mum has just like asbestos hands. <laughs> More like asbestos. Am I right? Disco jail. That sounds like a disco stew thing. I need to uh, pretty. This is supposed to be a left hand thing. I don't think any left hand stuff. I'm gonna uh, play some singles from my left side. Um, and just uh, that seems like a useful thing to do. Disco jail. What is disco jail? What is this strange thing? By the way, the whole time we're doing this, on my other screen. I've still got the adrenaline mob. I've still got this spooky, scary skeleton spooking my guts off. So that's a thing. Oh no! I got rid of the smoke! There we go. Don't want to, we don't want to get rid of the smoke. We like the smoke. Um, five word summary. Blue gas. Goosebumps. Fire fingers. Actually, it was green gas. I should have said green gas because you can see that the green gas is now blue. Uh, I'm supposed to be prepping for a, a gig in Lincoln on Friday with Great Manta, but I think all I'm doing is rambling about goosebumps. Um, oh no, 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 I'll tell you what, can you do this? Um, we were talking about, um, you know, if you've got like a candle. Uh, there's a way to like you lick your fingers and you turn the put the, you turn the candle off by pinching it to put the fire out. Um, I can't do this because I'm terrified, but um, apparently mischief teller can. Um, can you can you do the candle thing, or are you also rightfully frightened of fire? Because I'm yeah I'm terrified of that. Oh my god. Hold on, I'm still reading, I'm trying to read this and maintain interest. That's amazing. Turn the candle off, you know what I mean. You can turn anything off if you're brave enough. No, I'd like to rephrase that. You can turn anything off if you hit it hard enough. Except the disco ball, apparently. Oh, that's just getting rubbish. I've also realised that the chair's getting cut off at the bottom. Let's see if we can fix this. Um, there's a whole lot. I've got like a little, a sneaky little to-do list that I'm trying to sort out right now um, on my, all of my nice little things. Um, I a lot of it's going to be boring back-end stuff that, that that no one will appreciate. But um, but yeah, there's there's stuff that I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna try and like improve for this uh, for the next for the next time I stream because I'm. I'm slowly learning that there are there are easier ways to do things, as I so often do. I feel like my entire life is doing everything the hard way and looking back and thinking, oh, why did I do that? Um, the door to the studio, not, not the one that's visible, not even the one, because by the way, door, another door. How's, how about that? But the door I'm talking about is another door. There's three of these damn things. But, no, what, what am I doing? What am I doing? So, um, when I put the outside door on, uh, the old door was a bit rubbish and crappy, so I, uh, uh, we had another door. It was just lying around. I'm in an abandoned factory, so that's what you do. And there was another door, um, and I unscrewed the door, uh, uh, the old door, uh, and this is about six o'clock at night. No, maybe, maybe yeah, about six o'clock at night. I'd finished. Finished teaching uh, for the day. I was like, well, this is, this is going to be a quick one. I'm going to spend an hour swapping these doors out. Probably last maybe half an hour, maybe even 20 minutes if I can do a good job on this. So I unscrew the door. Uh, these screws are absolutely threaded, by the way, so this was a nightmare on its own. And then I put the other door on, and it's just a little bit too big. Not much. We're talking millimeters too big. Maybe even 10 mil too big along the frame. Hey, you've spoiled the story. You can't spoil the story. And so I, uh, I, um, uh, so, so I'm thinking, right, well, I don't want to put the old door back on, because this is only going to take me another 20 minutes, and I'm, I'll, be, I'll be off home. And um, I, uh, 
you know, so I think, well, I don't have a wood plane. I do now, but I, I didn't then. I don't have a wood plane. So, I do have a saw. So what I'm gonna, I could use a, a, maybe a hammer and a large screwdriver to kind of a chisel it off maybe, but either way, I've got a saw. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna saw it off just a little bit. How hard could it be? I mean, this is only a 20 minute job, you know. I'm just gonna saw a little bit off this door and it's gonna fit. Um, it really feels like that sometimes. It's me and, me, me and uh, Jay from The Loft. Like, that man has stories about this building. That, that man has seen the ghosts that dwell within this building, same as me. Um, but yeah, I mean, the, the, even the guy... Uh, I'm, I'm getting distracted. So I, I start sawing the, the side of this door off. Um, and this goes on, my hands are trash. This goes on for, I think, three hours. Four hours until the door finally is able to close. And I'm able to lock it and I'm able to go home. My hands... I couldn't play drums for about two weeks. My hands were so badly damaged by the process. Uh, what was I supposed to be playing? Left side, left side. Um, it was appalling. And if you look at the door now, anyone who goes in the studio, look at the side of the door, you'll see the saw marks. I, I painted over me, you'll see the saw marks. God knows I did everything the hard way because I'm bad at DIY. It is all measure twice, cut once, measure again, cut another two times, three more measurements, two more cuts, and finally, I'm ready to do one more measurement and cut. So often. Yeah, no, there was a guy who lived in this room, I say lived in this room, I think he did live in this room, before me. Uh, before I got this room, I, uh, I was, he used to be travelling out to students' houses just before the pandemic. Uh, and it was just awful trying to travel on buses to students. So I, I decided I needed to go to uh, uh, get one place to teach in. And uh, I went to uh, uh, the loft uh, uh, where I teach at and uh, said, Hello, I need to rent one of your rooms for 15 hours a week minimum, maybe more. And they used to ban setting up and wanting like two hours a week. Yeah, absolutely. I've got a drill, but that's about it really. Maybe I, I could probably use that drill to do something clever, but I don't know. Um, but, um, and power tools aren't even that much. It just feels pointless to buy them if I've now done the thing I need it for. So over the span of my career, I'm sure I'll collect it. Exactly, exactly. Just exactly the way, exactly the way Dad did it. The, um, yeah, there was a guy in here beforehand, and I think he might have been living in here. Because like the stuff he had, he, he left a backpack here. And I had to go through it to make sure, it's actually still stashed away, but I had to go through it to make sure there were no, you know, I heard horror stories about like people teaching in, in, in rooms They've not checked thoroughly and finding needles and stuff. And I didn't want that to be a situation. So I went through it and there's just stuff in there. But like, it's just like, it looks like someone's been living here. And that's kind of spooky when you think about this being an old abandoned haunted factory. It's really, 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 really quite strange. So like, there's a whole load of, uh, you know, a whole load of weirdness going on with this building. It's like, you know, in, in horror movies where you know, the, you move in, and then you start to learn about the family before that, who used to live in the house. And, like, who have just gone through this haunting and been chased out or killed or whatever. Um, like, find, going through that stuff is like learning about the person before. And then, you know, I start putting everything up and suddenly I'm spending six days a week here. Seven days a week here. Like, I have well and truly become, like, the resident in this building. I'm here in this building more than anyone else, I'm convinced of it. Um, there are other people who go to this building, but I am in this building, like, I am the ghost that haunts this building. Like, I am the one who spooks the ghosts in this building. Why am I kind of come out? Now nah, he's gone, he's gone, he's long gone. Um, he left behind an electric drum kit, and I, uh, I gave that to the loft recently because it's just, it's hanging around in my studio for ages and I didn't have a use for it. It was just like, I was expecting him to come back for this stuff, he never did. I just left behind this, all the stuff. So who knows, who knows what's going on with that. Just real strange stuff. Real strange stuff. But yeah, um, any of you seen any ghosts? You ever seen a ghost? I saw a ghost once. Uh, in my, in the house that, uh, Actually, not the first house that I think my parents ever lived in, but um, maybe the second one. But I was very young at the time, probably like seven or eight. 
and uh, when I knew that there was nobody in the corridor, I saw somebody walk past. And it, was, it was impossible for anyone to walk past, but I saw vividly somebody walk past. Um, and it absolutely scared the life out of me. Yeah. Is there a basement? There is a basement! And inside that basement, there is no light. There is no light in the basement downstairs. Instead, all we have is, uh, there's no light, there's a load of abandoned workman's tools. And they've been there for a long time, like a long time. Uh, rusty saw blades, you know, like old, molded, uh, uh, kind of wood. Uh, it's all a stone basement. This is all uh, an old Victorian building. Uh, uh, maybe a little older than Victorian. I mean, probably, this is probably uh, 18... I don't know when it's from, maybe 1880, that kind of thing. And um, me and, and Jay from upstairs, we, we decided to go into the basement. It's pitch black, low ceiling in the stone space. Uh, all these abandoned tools and saw blades. And uh, some of this stuff is, is recent. Some of this stuff looks like 90s, uh, 1990s maybe. Uh, you know, which is, I say recent, that's 30 years old. Uh, and uh, this would have been 2021 maybe we did this. And, you know, it's pitch black, we were exploring by phone light. And inside there was this, this wooden box, this old wooden chair. I mean, this is no word of a lie, by the way. I am not making any of this up, and I'm not even exaggerating this story. Um, there's an old box in this basement. Like an old chest. It's, uh, it's not quite a chest. It's not like a te treasure chest. It's more like uh, it's an old wooden box. It, it might, maybe it's not going to be eighteen eighties. This is like maybe nineteen fifty. This wooden box. I don't know. Very old. And uh, me and Jay do what you will. We open up the haunted box in the pitch black basement by the light of our of our mobile phone flashlight. Uh, and inside this box, uh, there are books, old books. Uh, the kind of thing you'd see at like a, like a, like a, like a, not even like a charity shop, like a, like an antique book shop, just, just stuff. These are books from like 1920, 1930. I've got a, a couple of my books down there. I, I've got, uh, I've got one book down there that was actually printed while Wagner, a book about Wagner, and it starts talking about Wagner's current career, and I realized, hold on a minute, this was printed while Wagner was still alive. What the hell's going on here? But anyway, these, these antique books are in this thing. And, um, uh, and, and so we're going through this, there's all these old books. And then, in cellophane, so we know that this was relatively recently that someone had done this. But there, in this, this uh, paper wallet, there is a, uh, a child's homework in calligraphy. Uh, from 1902. No word of lie. This is not like one of like like a kid who has done some homework that has been like you know you put some tea on it to make it look like it's old. It's none of that. This is old old paper in like proper calligraphy writing, dated 1902. How weird is that? And we open that box by the way. Like that's not what you do. That's not what you do. You do not go into the haunted basement, you do not open the spooky chest and let out all the spooky demons. It's like uh, let op opening the well in the ring. You're not supposed to do that. You weren't supposed to let her out. Like, who knows what stalks these horses? I don't tell my students this, by the way. I, like, I, tell, uh, I tell my remote students because I'll never come here. I never, I never tell my actual students because they'd never, they'd never want to come here again. Like, we can't even get the, light, the landlord to fix the lighting. So, 1800. Uh, no, no, I've never said 1800s, it's always been 1902. I think this building might be late 1800s, but... Ha, <laughs> yeah! No, no, it was after the start of Covid, it was after the... Probably, maybe when I started another lockdown or something like that. But, um... But yeah, like, how spooky. Uh, I never tell my students, except for the uh, remote students who are in different countries. They, they love it, but like... I wouldn't want to tell a student who's actually got to come here, especially at night, especially in winter. But it's just like, a lot of the time when I'm closing up, you know, I've got to, I've got to turn all the lights off in here, and then it's pitch black outside, and I've got to put the locks on my door, then we've got some automated lights in the hallway. Ah, oh, 13 Ghosts, what a film, what a film. It's got Shaggy from Scooby-Doo in it, Matthew Lillard, who can always smell poop, that's Matthew Lillard. Um... Mischief tells you, we watched 13 Ghosts recently, didn't we? 
What a film. What a film. Or did I watch it in my studio? But yeah, you know, um, like a lot of the time when you're locking up here at night, being the only person in the building, you feel it here. Not in the head, behind the head. It's, it, it's at the back of the head and above. You can feel it there and you know you've got to get out quick. Quick. It is not a pleasant feeling. Even when the lights come on, it is not a pleasant feeling getting out of this building sometimes. I'm, I'm probably going to get the heebie-jeebies and um, I'm probably going to have a rough one going out tonight just from telling all these stories. I've brought back all this lovely, uh, lovely fear. But yeah, 13 Ghosts, what a film. I can never remember the name of the main character, but he's, he's, one of the, he's got one of those faces we always recommend, recognize. I mean... 13 Ghosts is a Scooby-Doo movie. Let's not, let's not mince words here. 13 Ghosts is a Scooby-Doo movie. The dog is missing. Scooby is missing. But Shaggy is there. No question that Shaggy is there. Oh, yeah, yeah. When we first moved in, we watched... Uh, uh, we ordered pizza and watched um, Scooby-Doo on Zombie Island, which is one of the, the most frightening films of all time. Still frightening. Except, when I watched it when I was a child, I found it really upsetting. Um, actually, there's a the thing. When the zombies are appearing in Scooby-Doo on Zombie Island, the, um, uh, a green gas starts to appear and swell around the floor. And then the zombies break up through the floor. The green gas comes up, and then the zombies... So I think we better get the green gas back. Let's get this. Uh, it's gonna, it's gonna start like, I'm gonna accidentally like raise up a zombie in here, maybe. Maybe that'd be that would make for an amazing stream, actually. I think that's probably a good thing. There we go. So it looks like this. Let's get a little bit more green gas. There we go. So, you see this kind of thing happening. And then, um, you know, the zombie pirates would, uh, would, would come up from the bayou, the kind of marshy bayou floor. And um, that would frighten me a lot, because these zombies were really... They're not like uh, Evil Dead, which uh, I watched that when I was in year six. I had a horrible, I had a horrible Evil Dead dream last night. Well, uh, I've just remembered now. Huh? Many nightmares, many nightmares. Anyway, I watched Evil Dead when I was about ten. I think I must have been a little bit younger when I saw Scooby Doo. Uh, but um, uh, and uh, yeah, yeah, and the zombies come up through the floor, and uh, uh, it's like. It's very frightening. It's a really, really, really good, good children's animation. Uh, good, good children's animation should be a clever balance of, of kind of like educational and traumatizing. You've got to get the education and the trauma in kind of equal footing for children's children's content. Um, like Doctor Who, excellent example. Um, uh, Scooby Doo and Zombie Island, excellent example. Um, Evil Dead uh, Two, excellent example. Um, but the, um, Aliens as well, I think I, I, I watched around the same time. Barrels are fun. But, yeah, so, um, I was terrified of these zombies coming up through the floor. And I was really upset by it. Uh, and then I realised that we had a house with th Yeah, the zombie in the pit. That's such a frightening sequence. But then, um, I realised we had a house with three floors. My bedroom was on the top floor, the third floor. And, um, the third floor? The second floor? I can never remember which way around it is for Americans and English people. I was on the top floor. So there's no way a zombie could come up through the floor. Because, for a zombie to come up through the floor, like, th there's nothing there. The floor's only about that thick, and then it's the next floor down. So, there's no way a zombie could get me in the bedroom. It's only downstairs. Grizzly tales for gruesome kids! Absolutely, that's another one. You gotta get the trauma and the education just right. That's not, by the way, that's not something I apply to my teaching. But for my teaching, it's only education, no trauma, no trauma. I hope. Um, I ha I did, I did once make a student cry. No, I, I had uh, two students cry in my lessons. Um, one uh, was just children being children. Um, I think they, they had a tummy ache or something. Uh, and they were fine after about 10 minutes. Uh, but, um, um, the, um, the other one, a young, young kid, uh, playing drums. And I try and encourage people to count when they play drums. Uh, play one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. 
soul, that kind of stuff. And, um, yeah, and so I was, um, uh, uh, you know, trying to encourage the count, and uh, they cracked under the pressure. And that's something, like, I know I've done before. I kind of gave them a free last and I apologized and that kind of thing, but, you know. I think that that's the only, the only traumatic, the, the, the only, the only time I've kind of, uh, 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 been traum trauma. Oh, yes. Army of Darkness. Absolute. See, the problem with the Evil Dead trilogy is that it's so... I've not seen uh, uh, the TV show. I've not seen Ash vs. the Evil Dead. But the problem with the Evil Dead trilogy is that it's so different for each one. Um, Evil Dead 1, absolutely traumatizing. Just the most horrible thing I've ever seen. Um, Army of Darkness, just so goofy that it... it, it, it it's just so goofy. Evil Dead 2, it's kind of like... Uh, I think I watched Ross Scott say this recently on the Cursed Farms. Evil Dead 2 is kind of like Goldilocks, it's like right in the middle. I've only seen Evil Dead 2 once, I've seen Evil Dead 1 and Army of Darkness loads of times. Um, but they're, they're just so different as films. Um, what a film though, Army of Darkness. Uh, I've not rewatched it recently. Again, it's always back to the flaps. No, I want to... Left side, left side. So. I've not really watched Army of Darkness recently. I've, um, when, when was the last time you watched Army of Darkness? Because I'm worried that it doesn't hold up. I think I must have watched it uh, a couple of years ago. Maybe five, five years ago now. Um, I always... I, I do think every single time I, I uh, sleep in, I think one of two things. If I, if I oversleep... Um, I either think about one of my students one day telling me they had a wake-up disaster <laughs> where they just didn't wake up on time or I think about the, uh, the alternate ending to Army of Darkness uh, where he basically said the words, Klaatu Baratheon too but um, he did the spell wrong and he wakes up and like Earth is like ruined and he goes out and says I slept too long Uh, I did watch the remake of Evil Dead, and I, I actually really enjoyed the, the, the remake of Evil Dead. Um, it's, it's got the new horror kitsch to it that, that is maybe weaker, but the film was willing to be disturbing in a way that I think the, it, it is faithful to the original film. Um, it was willing to just be relentlessly upsetting in, uh, uh, in a way that's kind of feels similar to the original film. Because um, that's the thing about Evil Dead 2. Uh, two different... Well, I know the uh, there's the I Slept Too Long, and then there's the uh, Shop Smart, Shop Smart ending. Um, which is, you know, which is obviously a classic. Um, is there another one? Or is that, is that it? Because um, those are the only two I know. Also, every single time I think about it, I think about Duke Nukem as well. Hail to the king, baby. Not that I can do a good, good even voice. Dun da dun da Where's uh, Pike Pegasus is obsessed with Jeep right now? We've been doing the, the Discord added the um, uh, soundboards feature. Oh, that's weak. Uh, there we go. Discord added the soundboards feature, and so um, we've just been mucking around with just being able to play dun da dun da from Jeep Newcom at any at any given opportunity, which is. Uh, Certainly bad for the, uh, uh, the old, uh, I don't know. It's a, it's a joke that's probably getting tired now, but we've been doing endless stupid impressions of Dick Newcomb. But yeah, I am noting that my um, signal is still very, very bad. Nobody has commented on it though, so I'm interested to know how watchable this stream is. Maybe I'll find out on the, uh, the VOD, but uh, when I go back to it. Two different enemies army of darkness. Uh, shop smart, shop S smart, and um, for some reason now I'm stuck thinking about the different endings in Wayne's World. Is that Wayne's World one or two where they just they have the different endings and they, they switch between them doing the diddly doo diddly doo diddly doo diddly doo thing? Oh, I don't know. I don't know. No, it's probably my internet. I'm um. Floating around um, 500 to 1,000 kilobits a second, uh, which is not good. 
Yeah, the shop fight's the original one, and I slept too long is the alternate ending. I think it, I don't know if it kind of. I don't. I don't think it's like the even the DVD version. I think it's like a deleted scene, maybe. But uh... well, as long as you can hear me, because uh, everyone knows that you know the, the important part of these streams is is my uh, my kind of witty repartee and not my incredible good looks, um, which are currently being stank up by the green gas. Oh no, it's zombie. Hold on, hold on. No, zombie gas. What else has zombie gas? Return of the Living Dead. That's called zombie gas, isn't it? Anna says, picture is very poor, sound is good. Uh, is that in, in relation to the picture being very poor, or just the, uh, the person on the picture looking, looking terrible? Because I can't change this. Like, I've tried. God knows I've tried. Um, but yeah, no, uh, uh, Return of the Living Dead, that's a film that has, um, uh, that's got, uh, green, I'm convinced it's green zombie gas again. I don't know if I made that up. Did I make that up? Black Ops Zombies, does it have, I know Call of Duty Black Ops has the poison gas. Uh, I don't know, about, I don't know about the zombies. But yeah, the, um, Return of the Living Dead, um, I thought that that was, a. Uh, that did a really good balance, a better balance, I think, than Evil Dead 2. Or maybe even, maybe even, uh, than, um, than, uh, um, oh. Maybe even better than Army of Darkness. Uh, I'm changing as I speak. How am I changing? Who knows? Um, oh, I've just figured out what you mean. Anyway, moving swiftly on. No, um, I am, uh, I thought that the, the Return of the Living Dead did a better job of uh, kind of capturing the weird, funny mood than, than um, Army of Darkness did in terms of being super, super, um, uh, you know, kind of over the top and uh, ultra goofy. Um, you can drive around on a bus through zombie gas. Ah, oh, Anna, thank you so much. You too, you too. Learned it from watching you. Uh, yeah, the, um... Never, to tell you the truth, I don't think I've ever played Black Ops Zombies. I've never... I played through Call of Duty 2. I played through... I didn't play Call of Duty 3. Uh, I played through uh, Modern Warfare. Uh, when that came out. Uh, and I remember I was playing on... I couldn't afford a copy at the time. So I was... A friend of mine who had a PC copy let me it and I sold it. And um, I was using a key gen so I couldn't, I couldn't play it online. But you can play online if you play on cracked servers that will not require a, 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 a CD key. So, I was playing on cracked servers and every single server would just be full of like, uh, people were using aim bots and stuff like that. So it was a total nightmare. Is it time to, uh, let's change the colour of the gas. Let's uh, stink it up a different colour. Um, we could do pink. Let's get some pink gas in here. That's like red. I can't tell what colour pink is. There we go, that, that's basically pink. Can we get pinker? We have to go pinker. I'm too colour blind for this. I'm too colour blind. I think pink is closer to white, so maybe if I do that. That's as good as we're getting. Cool, pink gas, pink gas. Um, stressful. It's not as stressful as. Um, uh, there are more stressful games to play than... I mean, I find uh, playing Call of, games like Call of Duty Online even more stressful anyway. I used to... I find any competitive competitive gameplay uh, stressful. I like co-op. I like co-op. Barney the Dinosaur Pup! There we go! Another example. Children's entertainment has to be educational and traumatic. Um, it's just the way it is. A little bit of education, a little bit of trauma. It's the way it's got to be. Now, I've been playing left foot, left foot, left foot, left foot. I should probably play left foot, left foot, left foot. More red than blue. Well, all I'm doing is hue shifting, and... I... I do not have the, uh, the colour receptors to figure out what colours these are. So, I think we're doing Barney the Dinosaur Gas. Um, the green gas either turns you into a dummy, or... It makes zombies come up through the floor. Or, it denotes that your hygiene bar is low. Oh, it could be a combination of all three today, we don't know yet. Um, uh, the blue gas... Uh, what did the blue gas do? I don't know what the blue gas did. 
but the pink gas is probably slowly turning me into Bind of the Dinosaur. And that would explain why I love you and you also love me, uh, and why we're a happy family. Um, but yeah. Always with the silly, silly animations and stuff. The, um, oh, what was it? Return of the Living Dead. Yeah, no. I remember watching through... <laughs> oh no, it's turning me into a furry. Blue flavor. Actually, blue fa flavor, absolutely. Ta chemicals and sugar. Purple as well, maybe, but, but definitely blue. Blue flavor. They call it raspberry, but it's not. They call it bubble gum, but it's not. It's not natural, naturally occurring bubble gum, fresh from the bubble gum tree. Return of the Living Dead. Um, Return of the Living Dead 1, masterpiece. Return of the Living Dead 2, weaker. Return of the Living Dead 3, probably one of the funniest pieces of shit I ever watched. Um, I cannot believe how bad Return of the Living Dead 3 is. Um, it's one of those where it's like, it's not even so bad it's good. It's so bad that like, it was genuinely uncomfortable uh, to watch. Which I think is, any film that manages to make you feel like that must be doing something right at least. So the, um, Return of the Living Dead 3, that just absolute, absolute train wreck. Um, I feel like that might be one that Anna's watched. But here's another one that Anna will have watched. Did you watch Hellraiser 3? That's the one at the nightclub. And that is another, in my mind, another absolute stinker of a film. What colour gas is Hellraiser 3? Uh, that's gonna be... I think Hellraiser 3 might be like a black gas, and I don't think I can actually demonstrate that. Uh, uh, using uh, this kind of thing. Let me just, let's see if we can kind of create a black gas. Uh, hold on, let's get that back to normal. I'm trying to like create like a black gas. Uh, if I do this. There we go. That's the one. Ah, excellent. This is Hellraiser 3. This is peak Hellraiser 3. So this is what Hellraiser 3 looks like. Um, but it's an absolute, absolute rubbish film. Um, absolutely amazing. I think Doug, Doug Bradley is still uh, a pinhead in Hellraiser 3. But he, there's some kind of weird nightclub thing and everyone in the nightclub dies and all this stuff. And the fighting spills out into the streets of, I believe, Los Angeles? I forget. But um, I remember one of the Cenobites is like a DJ. And this DJ is like, he's got the power to shoot killer CDs or chop your head off and stuff. And he's got this like, insane, ridiculous Donald Trump smile, like this rictus, as he's shooting CDs out of his smile to chop your head off. And it's just absolute garbage, absolute garbage. Banger of a film, highly recommend. But yeah, so uh, uh, that was, uh, yeah, how, no, enough of this weird black gas. It's like I'm trying to like escape from, uh, I don't know, who knows what. Very strange, very strange. Uh, now it looks like I'm trapped in, uh, now it looks like that I'm burning my muffin again. And by the way, burning my muffin is not an innuendo. That is a, a perfectly normal thing to say. Um, so let's have none of that, uh, if you will. Uh, there we go. There we go. Uh, you've not done yellow. Oh, actually, that just makes it look like the room's on fire. Yeah, maybe we could do that for a bit. Um, if anyone wants to try and put the fire out, that'd be that'd be super sweet. Um, I can't do it because I've not been taught the trick to uh, like pinch the candle with the fingers. Um, there we go. Good enough. Good enough. Um, so. Um, yeah, the, uh, what on earth am I doing? I'm supposed to be doing, like, Great Manta stuff. Uh, we had a rehearsal yesterday. And I spent, like, two hours prepping for it. And everything I did 
was absolute. Every every single note I played was absolute gold. Then as soon as the band turn up, everything I play is garbage. Piss fire. Why do you gotta? Why do you gotta? Why do you gotta? It's. <laughs> why has it always got to be piss with you people? That is. That is unacceptable. All right, all right, we're changing the color. Ooh, ooh, oh, what was that? All right, all right, all right. Uh, let's change this color. Uh, right, uh, what color can we do? Hue shift. Uh, green. What other colors are there? I don't really know. Well, this is like a nice, like a, a greeny blue. That's a nice color. This is like closer to the color of the, uh, the Scooby-Doo zombies than it is the, the gas that turns you into, in, you into a dummy from um, Goosebumps. There we go, there we go. Actually, it's probably also closer to, no, it's not as close to the, uh, all right, all right, all right, mate. Uh, it's not as close to the, um, uh, co uh, the color that the, the Sims give off when they're not showered. Um, that's the only thing with drums. Every single time I play drums, I'm like, oh shit, got to shower again. Just drummers stinky all the time. Absolute fact. What's in the bottle? Oh, in this. Just. <laughs> oh, why is it water? It's all. It's always water. Look, it's water. Vapor to note the place where you stand to restore HP. Yeah, but in what in in what game would you stand in the vapor to restore HP? Uh, oh, it could be like HP vapor in the bottle. I've, I've certainly seen games where you drink like HP vapor in a bottle, like in Prince of Persia. For the weed to be zombie weed, because zombies don't have a this is this is well trodden territory by discussed in this important book here. This important book here. Oh no, I've lost my book. This is this is very upsetting. I've got a very important book here and I can't find it. Oh no. Somewhere in this room is my copy, unless it's on the floor, is my copy of the Zombie Survival Guide by Max Brooks. Uh, which is a very important work. Unless it's under here. No, it's gone. It's gone. How upsetting. How upsetting. The Zombie Survival Guide by Max Brooks. And that uh, document uh, makes it very, very clear that uh, zombies do not have a functioning uh, uh, autonomic system in that regard. So zombies would not wee. Um, uh, zombies just wouldn't produce anything like that. Uh, they would essentially desiccate uh, over time. Uh, unless you are referring to the concept of the, the we itself being uh, itself zombified. In which case, that would require the we to be alive in the first place, killed, and then uh, 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 resurrected. I was going to say reincarnated, but it's not a reincarnation, is it? Uh, resurrected. I have books. I have many books. I've got a big old bookshelf right over there. Many books, many, many books. Um, uh, but yeah, so, um, and I've also got like various piles of books around the studio as well, just, just everywhere, just total, total, total mess. So, so yeah, it's, it's probably in the basement. Oh, yeah, I've no idea what's going on with it. Uh, a gym moved in recently downstairs. And I expect that they've probably gone through the basement. So maybe they've kind of, the gym have done something with that, um, you know, that thing. Reweed. Why, why do you, why do you got it? I fit, easy, easy. Uh, best book in my studio. I've lost it, I can't find it. Best book in my studio, Mike Mangini, uh, Rhythm Knowledge. Can't find it, but it's here somewhere. Uh, oh, yeah, here, here. Uh, I've got one and two. This is the best book. It's the best music book I've ever read. 
Uh, not just a drum book, but like for everything. It is so thorough about the way the brain works and the way the connections are built and rebuilt and destroyed and re rebuilt and reconnected and everything. Um, that uh, it really is my kind of like, you know, it, it's my bible for uh, the way I try and organize my practice time and, and kind of plan out my technique. Like, uh, uh, case in point, at the minute, I'm working on the groove from Alien Hip Hop by Virgil the Nasty. I can, let's go over to the drum kit. I can go over to the drum kit and uh, talk about some of this stuff. Uh, enough smoke for now. Let's get a uh, drum cam. I'll get my uh, thingy bobs. Here we go. Um, I've got a, uh, I've got to set my mics up uh, very, very, very quickly. As I do that, uh, over here. Uh, I'm going to mute my desk mic, and I'm going to open up my drum mic. So, you probably won't hear much of me right now, because I've muted my mic, but I will be back. Uh, over here. If I get my stuff, and I've got to reopen the chat. And uh, now, now I am talking on a mic over here. You should be able to hear me loud and clear, nice and clearly. Uh, I assume that I am audible. If I am audible from audible.com, uh, then... Uh, one second... Uh, the chat should be connecting. That would be great if the chat could do that. Because if it does, I can see what you're saying. But I assume that I am now able to be heard. Uh, we've got to move that somewhere where I can... I can actually get to it. Uh, but yeah, so uh, working on stuff like, uh, uh, um, uh, at the minute I'm working on, on alien, uh, alien Hip Hop, which is something like... Uh it's a really easy pan. But the problem is, uh, it cycles in groups of three. So instead of uh, playing it 4-4, four, four, uh, Instead, it just cycles in groups of tack, 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 groups of three. So it takes three bars to resolve. So at the minute, that I can basically get those um, get those together. This is not connected to chat. Let's get this. Uh, let's get this sorted. Sorted. But um, uh, I can basically get the groove together. But I know that it's going to take me about six more weeks until I can actually get it feeling comfortable, because that's what I really want. I want to be comfortable when I'm playing it, not just like barely able to keep up. Um, so I've been spending a lot of time at the minute just playing. Uh, uh, that kind of stuff. Super duper slow. Um, just get it, get it dialed in. And it's very frustrating. Very frustrating, and, uh, and uh, um, Mischief Tale was at the studio earlier, and I, th I think I was practicing the Nemo Liam Cyanide Christ not, uh, uh, thing from Sugar instead. Uh, the, uh, uh, I can't get this at speed. Uh. Ah, That pan. Uh, new Millennium Cyanide Christ. And I was literally just here uh, shouting swear words, topless, while I was doing it. It was very cool. It was very sexy. Um, trying to get this, this pattern. But, um, 
uh, the, the, the important thing is knowing that although it's frustrating, it takes around six weeks for, for anything to develop. So I expect that in six weeks' time, it will be, uh, it'll be much better. The other good sugar one is, uh, uh, I was doing recently is um, uh, um, uh, oh my goodness, I've forgotten. Uh, future breed machine. Uh, um. Ah. Uh, which is great for. Oh, the other, the other new, uh, new Millennium Cyanide Christ one is. Uh, uh. Barrels are fun, um, but the uh, 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 knowing that it will take uh, six weeks for anything I do today to get into my into my kind of uh, technique is a real relief, to be honest, because uh, I don't mind. I don't sound pardon me. Uh, I don't sound that much better day to day because human beings are just really bad at spotting the difference week to week. Um, or indeed month to month. I apologize for that. That was horrible. Uh, that was some green gas breath there. So, what else was I doing? Uh, that was another my sugar. Oh yeah, just I'm always noodling with the uh, 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 the bleed group. The, uh. Forgets about the fives after that. Uh. Barrels of fun. I can't get the uh, I can't get that 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 that, that groove over. But the uh, the threes and the fives I got, um, which is nice, which is nice because there's a. It's like one of those, you've got to play it every single sound check. As soon as they say, oh, can you check your kick drum? Hell yes, I can check the kick drum. That and the, uh, uh, the woven web as well, one of the LTC offices that play. Uh, um So much fun to play, so much fun to play. You can better if you can get it clean, which I can't, but there you go. Uh, such is the importance of practice. I've been uh, uh, frustrated by lack of LTCL progress recently, which is really, really annoying, um, because I've just not had time to touch it. I've got a whiteboard there, just behind the camera. Camera's there, whiteboard's there. Um, and the notes are... Oh, uh, September and October 2022. September, October 2022, which is not great. That's like nine months since I've touched the LTCL. I can still play this stuff, but it's just like, uh, I need to be better. Especially for, what was it, the, uh, uh, the Gavin Harrison material is, is not easy. The, uh, uh, the unsettled intro is just a lot of fun. Uh, <laughs> Lots of crazy stuff. And then there's also a really nice... Uh, uh that kind of stuff, which is just... It needs, it needs work. I can't just not play it for nine months and then hope it's magically going to be there. Uh, the maintenance practice is not happening. I'm doing with this. 
Uh, yeah, so that's one of the other things I want to sort out. So, I got raided the other day, which was exciting. Not not the studio, uh, luckily. Not by, uh, raided by zombies. No, uh, or ghosts, even. Uh, there's a... There's a kind of a protective field around the, uh, the the walls of the studio that keep the zombies and ghosts out. Usually, usually, but uh, uh, I got raided on, str- on 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 stream, which is very very exciting. And um, uh, it was just a a real learning experience. It turned out that uh, I'm uh, allowed to play copyrighted stuff on stream as long as I don't bot it, uh, as long as I don't save the recording of it. Um, but even then, like, I've got loads of stuff that isn't recorded that I should be able to prep. And I haven't done that because I'm a bad streamer. So hopefully at some point, you know, we'll get more playthroughs happening. I think what I'd like to do is to structure these more in terms of, like, uh, half an hour to an hour practice pad. Then, you know, more like 15 minutes of noodling like I do now. And then 45 minutes of playing songs. Instead of just endless, 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 um... Uh, you know, kind of um, mucking about with stuff. Uh, not that I've got any problem mucking about, because uh, I like mucking about, but um, I think everyone else is presumably presumably less enthusiastic about it than I am. All the good old. <laughs> You are being sleepy all the time. I, I have never once seen you not being sleepy. And that's true. Except for when you're excitable. Even then, you return to being sleepy very, very, very soon afterwards. Um, hooting. Yeah, 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 Oh, procrastinating. What are you going to cook? And is it going to be noodles? <laughs> noodles. Cooking. Noodling. 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 I, I really want to get those like nice, tasty, double-time kind of... Uh, in the kind of fills in all the linear stuff but uh, uh, I want it double time I don't like the single time <laughs> 
Time feels a little bit bo boring. I want the uh, double time. Uh, go on. Manta. Uh, godless Manta, perhaps. No one commented on the uh, title of today's video. Did any anyone get that? Anyone get that? Uh, I'm just going to quickly get some water while you speculate. One second. In fact, uh, that title is uh, Acolyte of the Left Hand Path. While you speculate, I'm going to get more water because I'm very thirsty and it is good to hydrate. So, you should all go and get some water and drink some nice water and speculate on the meaning of the left-hand path. Uh, well, I set up my nice little BRB. Or at least we will be. Once I have refilled my water and my kettle. Something, something Satan. Yeah, it's like a, I think it's like a generally uh, vaguely satanic thing. I don't know. I think I remember it from a while ago. I got super into Anton LaVey, who is a total bloody weirdo. Um, but actually, come to think of it, Anton LaVey was a weirdo who was into um, dummies and automatons. So, oh, why does this always have to happen when people are watching? I've just poured water all over myself. That's, that's one for the clips, isn't it? Um, terrible, terrible. And Tom LaVey was into uh, weird dummies, so it kind of matches up with the, uh, um, matches up with all the Goosebumps talk. Well, that's, that's embarrassing. Okay, right. Anyway, I was born in, oh no, I forgot to turn the mic on. There we go, that'll make me more audible. Um, and Tom LaVey was all super into, um, uh, dummies and autumn tons, and he's, I don't know. Anyway, it was, a, it just struck my mind for some reason. Uh, we even lost the lid for there it is. I think this uh, is a, I don't know. It, it's a very strange thing. Um, I'm just gonna put this away. I'm gonna bin this, and I am currently in the process of making something. One second. There we go. Cool. I now have Zombie Wee Spillage. I believe Zombie Wee Spillage is the plot of uh, Return of the Living Dead 2. That's, uh, that's uh, how that happened. 
Uh, I've got some nice green tea. So if we're going to do green tea, I think that means we need green gas. So let's get that back. There we go. Lovely, lovely green, green gas. Let's get that in. Uh, oh, hold on. I can just make I can make the uh, the gas appear and disappear even more smoothly. There we go. That's the. This is the quality everyone comes here for. Like the quality of the gas uh, when it appears and disappears. Look at this. Look at this. There you go. Very futuristic, if I may say so myself. So, wait, wait, wait. Yeah, um, yeah, satanic power, uh, so, yeah, I, I kind of got super into that for a while, so I thought, I just, for some reason, that just reminded me of that, because I was looking for puns to do with the left hand. Um, but I am not going to dwell on it, because I have not revisited any of the internal of of ages, and I was just looking for a funny pun that everyone would find, huh, that's a, that's a thing that exists. So I'm going to take both of my drinks back over to the drum kit. I'm going to turn this off. Stubborn stained. <laughs> I'm going to take it. I'm going to take both of these over to the, uh, the drum kit. And uh, there we go. That green gas actually looks quite tasteful over there, doesn't it? Not tasty. Just taste. I, I, I have no idea what I meant by that. I have no idea what I could continue to mean by that. Um. Right. Drinks over there, stuff's over there. When did that fall down? Um, I assume I'm audible. Oh no, is that broken? Or am I just being stupid? I think I'm just being stupid. Who knows? Anyway, there's the thing. But I'm gonna grab my thing back in position. Uh, and then we are gonna carry on. Um, yeah, what am I actually trying to achieve here? Great Manta Prep. I think, really, a lot of this is just gonna be, uh, um... Just, just keep swimming kind of stuff. Uh, it really is just, just keep playing the stuff and don't mess up. Uh, I, I've been prepping the material for ages, a long time. So, I know all the parts, I just need to not screw them up. Uh, I think the parts that I tend to screw up, there's a... A long phrase on the, uh, on the track, Dream of Falling. Oh, by the way, it's out next, uh, it's out this month, uh, May 26th, I believe, uh, which is very exciting. Uh, there's a long phrase on Dream of Falling where I'm playing, uh... Where the right hand is just, like, going super speed, and I need to not get tired. Which means I've got to just do a whole lot of finger to not get tired of that. Um, so I've been doing a whole lot of that, all that stuff. And you know what that's good for, uh, of course, because it's what everyone always seems to request. Uh, The blast one. I'm sure if I'm going to be playing uh, uh, Eeyore material live. It's possible, but I might have tricked Eeyore into getting someone else to do it. Which would be nice, because uh, when I messaged Eeyore to be like, Hello, I would like to be part of your project. Um, I, they said uh, they said Derbyshire, but it turns out we're on the wrong side of Derbyshire, so they're about as far away as humanly possible from me. Oh, I forgot how much I hate green tea. Oh. Yeah, no, the... Uh, the uh, the blast bonks are uh, something of a cardiovascular challenge, and I am challenged in a cardiovascular way. So, trying to build my stamina on those is a is a is a real challenge. I mean, uh, what? Okay, for argument's sake, then let's do one minute of blast beats, starting three, two, one, go. <laughs> Not really keeping this super tight. But it's gotta keep going, is the main thing. No, it's not happening. 
happening. 30 seconds I can, ah, uh, 25 seconds I can do. 30 seconds I cannot. Ah. Uh. Ah, oh, I can't believe I've got to go on for another half hour after this. 30, 30 seconds of that I cannot do. Um, and a lot of the uh, EOS stuff is all like uh, one to two minutes of that. Um, I mean, there are, you can kind of break it up with patterns. Uh, uh, uh. break it up so that is uh, otherwise easier than it would have been oh oh but yeah it's not, it's not amazing there is all the uh, that's uh, the traditional uh, blast beat which is just this but really fast <laughs> traditional, are you supposed to do one foot in? Not that far, so I, I've cheated by it too. Uh, there's also the, the doing it, the blast point on the beat, the hammer blast. That kind of stuff. Uh, I don't tend to play much else. There is the... Which is quite nice, that's uh, right, uh, sorry, hand right left, hand right left. And I quite like this because it's a really flashy drum group. track I should be playing is probably that today. Um, I can probably dig it out and, uh, and, and run it. Uh, I will I will grab my phone later on and play that. But the, yeah, I think that, that stamina issue is the main one. That just means a whole lot of tracks. But when it, when it comes to uh, uh, playing the part on its own, um, When it comes to playing the part on its own, it's a conservation of energy problem because I can do it easily when I'm practicing. But when I'm playing, I put about 10 times the amount of force in. And that just makes everything a drag. It makes everything very difficult. Uh, oh, no, I'll tell you what I really need that left hand practice for. That was because there is a phrase. There exists a phrase uh, on uh, Parasite on the second verse. Uh, uh, while hitting the mic as many times as possible. One second. Let's uh, get this cable routing sorted. Cables, cables, cables. Okay, ooh. Cables. Cables. There we go. So, uh, yeah, is this a uh, 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 groove? So I wanted to play uh, uh, left leading rather than right leading because uh, when I play when I play right leading, uh, I get uh, um, ooh don't fall over. There we go. When I play right leading, I feel claustrophobic. I don't like crossovers, so instead I want to play that left leading. Uh, which is way easier. Uh, one of the other reasons is it means I can then shift over to, again, no crossovers. Uh, during the second half of it, it becomes uh, a kind of double kick variation. Uh, um Really, 
when I think about it now. I've got the orcs hat, so really I should just be able to play it. So, who knows, maybe it's an orcs hat problem. Um, I like the orcs hats mostly because it means I can do double kick stuff without having to, uh, to trip over that kind of thing. Um, I think the groove that really forced me to shift over to it was uh, uh, probably, uh, pardon me, was on Prefers 2 uh, at the end of the final track on the album where I play a long phrase of three bars of 11 and one of 10, but it's something like uh, 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 two, three, four. <laughs> Playing that crossed over or left, uh, crossed over is horrible. I just don't like it. Playing it left leading is horrible. I do not like it. So trying to play it uh, um, open, way, way, way easier. Oh! Hi, I'm tired. How are you all doing? Mr. Teller's sleepy. Mr. Teller's always sleepy. Oh no, I just realized. Can you see my fan? I've got a fan. It's my only fan. Um, I'm, uh, uh, it has gotten warm enough that it necessitates cooling, although it's not on right now. Uh, and I am drinking a hot drink, which isn't great either. And I'm also lip smacking directly into the mic, so I apologize for that. But, uh, yeah, uh, uh, looks like it's not in the way, so it's fine. Yeah, how are you all doing? Um, what are you up to? Are any of you free on Friday to come to Lincoln to see a good band? Uh, that's somewhat rhetorical. Um, I think we are on... I think everyone in this chat is the wrong side of the country for it. But uh, I'm hoping that there is going to be a Nottingham Day announced soon. Which would be nice. Um, but we're probably going to be doing more. We're probably going to be doing more. I think there's a possible Peterborough at some point as soon as... I don't know. We'll find out. We'll find out. Shadows of Motown documentary for homework once while I was at uh, drum school. I cannot stand Motown. I respect I respect it and I respect all the people involved with it. 
But oh my god, that means I cannot deal with it. I cannot deal with it. I do teach, uh, um, um, uh, what is it? Uh, ain't no man high enough. I do teach that. Uh, da 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 uh, I do teach that one. Uh, everyone knows it. It's Guardians of the Galaxy, I think. Um, but uh, no, cannot deal with it. Cannot deal with it. Michael Jackson, cannot deal with him. Um, uh, Stevie Wonder, I struggle. Um, I don't know. Can't can't deal with it. I think it's probably too funky and feel good. I I need to hear music that's uh, uh, more upsetting, maybe. Um, the uh, 70s versus the 80s divide, perhaps. I grew up with Iron Maiden instead, and now I just like like kind of uh, cheesy, cheesy faux evil stuff. Um. Right, uh, hand to foot coordination. But imagine the melody's me. It's all pentatonic. Uh, so I'm gonna do a major. Uh, oh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know it well. You don't want to hear me sing Motown. You don't want to hear me sing anything.
course by Gavin Harrison for the LTCL at the minute, and that uh, the chorus of that is. Uh, uh, displacements all over the shop. quickly grab my phone and I'm going to actually try and play some music uh, just for the sake of trying to do it because I need to get that sorted. One second. And I'm going to knock the mic over and mess everything up. Stay. Good mic. So, there exists a thingy. Where is this going? Where is this either coming to or going from? That is being sent. Ah, the FX end. Okay, okay. I'm with you, I'm with you. That is just a line. Uh, okay. I can find my stuff, and if I can find my stuff, we can save the universe. Okay. Oh, actually, this all relies on me having it on my phone, doesn't it? Doesn't it? Right, I'm not allowed to do any other, I probably shouldn't do any other Great Magic Prep. I'm not going to run the album now. Let's go, oh my goodness, that's a saucy meme. Wow, okay, interesting. Very exciting, very titillating, I thought. Um, Great Manta, how do you spell that? There we go. Oh no! I was under THE Great Manta. It's not. It's not good. All right, let's see if we can queue it up on uh, on the old other one. Hold on. Oh. Right. Other microphone while we're over here. So, can I find the other thing in time? The green smoke. The green smoke. Can I find that that other tune in time? Projects, Great Manta. Yes, okay, Parasite. Right, now if I hit play, you should be hearing that. I'm not hearing that, but you should be hearing that. Uh, so I assume... Yay! Chores, 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 chores. Nice. So, in that case, We've got that. Oh, it's muted. There we go. So I assume you can all hear that. Nice and clear. You getting that? I assume you're getting that. So if I run over and have a go at hitting play, is there anything else in the way here? Let's find out. Let's get rid of that. Cool. So, if I just run over and hit play, that should all work. Let's go find out. Again, the real goal here is workflow. That should always be the, the, the goal of technique. Technique is, a uh, well, good technique, is a question of workflow. Is being able to achieve what you need to with minimal thought. Good workflow requires minimal thought. You can make creative decisions instead of technical ones. At the minute I'm making a lot of technical decisions because I'm not well set up. So hopefully if I can get set up, we can make some more interesting creative ones. Let's find out. If I go this, I hit this. Now I can hear this. Are you hearing that loud and clear? And how loud are you hearing it over my drums? Therein lies the question. Um, if I start playing now, Will you hear it loud enough to actually do anything? Let's find out.
annoying. Oh, I forgot to switch the cameras. Right. Take two, take two. Well, the volume's okay, at least. I assume the volumes are okay. Let's uh, do that. Cool, okay. Second time lucky. I assume those volumes are okay.
I forgot about the out method, right? And the out method. Nice. And by nice. There we go, third time lucky. But by nice, it's sloppy. And, and therein lies the problem. Uh, that main riff, that main riff should be better. And it's not, it's gotta be tighter. So I've gotta sort that out. The verse two. That needs to be tighter as well. Uh, there's a solo in the middle. That thing. I mean, the whole thing needs to be tighter. Right? And the main issue is that I lack discipline as a player, and I need, I need to, I need to be more disciplined. I think that it is good, but I'm convinced that it can be better, and therein lies the issue. So, my work for the rest of the week is going to be trying to get that sorted, and. I am also going to try and get sorted uh, some more uh, uh, backstage stuff. Uh, I'm going to get a load of uh, uh, spreadsheets set up so that I can update titles and stuff really easily rather than mucking around with lots and lots of editing. Because workflow is king. If your oh, pardon me, or queen. Uh, if your workflow is good, everything you do will be good. Uh, good workflow is just the best. So, I'm going to sort that out, and I'm also going to sort out a load of stuff I can drum to that isn't going to get me taken down by uh, the cops, by uh, uh, copyright police. So, I will find a lot more stuff, because I think that, I really think that I, that this is the most fun when I am playing to songs. Um, if I can do that, I think everything will be great. So I'm going to do that. Um, I'm going to find more stuff to play to. In the meantime, uh, well, that's true, but I, I want to back back all. I keep, I, I keep a backup of all these, um, and I can record it locally, but it's such a pain. I could do that. There's not really an issue. It just means it creates one more step to upload, rather than to um, rather than to uh, uh, click one button on uh, Twitch and it, and it just exports. Yeah, absolutely. I think I think. Uh, uh, what I should do is just 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 take the L on it, uh, wing it, and then I can um, then what I could do is just export it and upload it because I can do that. It's just it takes so long and I'm lazy. I am lazier than that. So I don't know. I'll work it out. It's all my. I was always thinking. I'm always thinking six weeks down the line when it comes to uh, technique. Um, so. When I think about the stuff that I'm trying to practice right now, I think that uh, it's not going to get better for the gig, but I can improve it for the uh, six weeks down the line. Um, when I'm thinking long term, I think like six months. Um, imagine how good this stream will be in six months. I promise you it will be entertaining one day, as long as you stick around. So, um, if you can all do me the favor of not abandoning me, then... Yeah, exactly, I, I've, I've long since sold my soul. You might not believe this, but I was ginger when I was, when I was, uh, I was growing up. Um, I used to get made fun of for being ginger. And then I dyed my hair because I was a goth when I was a teenager, and it never went back. So, uh, I was cured somehow. I don't know how that happened, but there you go. Um, but yeah, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get a lot of stuff fixed up and it, things are gonna be even more interesting. What I'm also gonna then have to do is I'm gonna actually start figuring out how I can engage with all of you some more. So rather than just like doing everything on my own terms, I hope uh, you can all be a bit more involved. Especially if I can just play tracks and uh, I assume I can take requests much more easily. So that's a thing I'll probably do, but I'll, I'll experiment with that and I'll see what I can get away with. So, what I would like all of you to do is to look after yourselves, drink lots of water, and have a really, really, really nice evening. Um, it's been a pleasure hanging out. I really, really, I always really, really appreciate you um, um, and joining. I think everyone's followed me already, but like I'm now, now I've got this little uh, thing over here, the little ticker at the bottom, this thing. Uh, I'm gonna try and get like, uh, I need to, one of the other things I need to do is figure out how to change those messages over. Uh, that's another thing we're gonna do. But uh, uh, I'm gonna start dim trying to peer pressure people into inviting other people so that I can get more people joining. Because the more people, the better. Uh, everyone tell everyone that I am interesting. Uh, it's a lie, but 
Um, a little bit of, a little bit of lying makes the world go round, I think. So, I hope you all have a nice evening. That's not a lie. And I will see you all on Wednesday. That's also not a lie, because I'm streaming on Wednesday uh, at about 7 o'clock. So, have a good one, and I will see you then. Cheers! Uh, where is it? Cheers! Bye!